Pitch to Pro is the official podcast of USL Arkansas. This will be our platform to tell our story about the club and the special place that we call home, Northwest Arkansas. This is a journey. We want to bring you along for the ride. We'll share what's going on behind the curtain, help educate the community at large about soccer, our league, and give updates on the progress of the club along the way. Together, we'll explore and unpack our journey to professional soccer, the magic that is NWA, our community, and talk all things soccer from on the pitch to behind the scenes, telling the story of our club. Pitch to Pro Podcast is proudly sponsored by PodcastVideos.com. PodcastVideos.com is Northwest Arkansas's premier podcast recording studio. Equipped with industry-leading equipment, the recording studio and services save you time, money, and hassle. Simple. Natural. Beautiful. You won't find anywhere else like the Ozarks. It's an oasis, an Eden, an enigma, an adventure. It's an experience that leaves you completely content while also craving more. This wild, beautiful place is the perfect setting for the beautiful game. Through nine fan panel meetings made up of a diverse group of 36 people, 16 listening sessions, 500 one-on-one community conversations, and 10,000 online submissions from Ozarkers of all backgrounds, our identity was born. Introducing Ozark United FC, a new United Soccer League club that will unify, uplift, and propel the community we call home. This USL club embodies the spirit of Northwest Arkansas and the Ozarks. Our identity, from our name, to our crest, to our colors, will tell a story that was carefully written by those who know it best, the people who live here. The unique shape of our badge, featuring a condensed O, represents the high terrain of the Ozarks. Our interwoven OZ monogram is symbolic of the interconnectedness and individuality of the communities in our region. Anchored by Bentonville, Rogers, Springdale, and Fayetteville, all united by the game we love. Within the interwoven OZ are the letters ARK, reminding us of the state in which our club resides. The ever-ascending stripes demonstrate our rising acclaim, the limitless potential of Northwest Arkansas and the mountains of our home. Our modern, clean typeface is bold yet friendly. The Arkansas State motto, Regnant Populous, meaning the people rule, reinforces the club's commitment to being a club by and for the fans. In the middle of the state motto, a diamond with the number 25, which highlights the 25th state in the union, Arkansas, the only U.S. state where the gemstone naturally occurs. And finally, our colors. The varying shades of green found in our club's crest are a nod to the beautiful greens found in the Ozark Forest and the terrain that defines the region. These elements come together to create the identity of your club. Spirit, grit, heart, and tenacity have always been a part of the Ozarks. Now, Arkansas's first pro soccer club is bringing the same to you. Ozark United FC. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Pitch to Pro podcast. I'm your host, Wes Harris, Managing Director for Ozark United FC, Northwest Arkansas's professional soccer club playing in the United Soccer League. Let's just take a quick second. Man, that feels good to say. That's nice. (laughs) We got some color change up. We got a little bit of a different background here. Uh, We are back in the studio here with my guest today, Brett Parker, managing partner at Stone Ward. We have our beautiful two co-founders here, Warren Smith and Chris Wartitovich. Wow. You must be talking about this side. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, it's it it's finally time, finally time to come together and talk about our new brand. That's right, everybody. We are officially Ozark United Football Club. We are no longer USL Arkansas. It feels so good to finally be able to say that and wear the merch and have the reactions that we've had, and we'll talk about it in a minute. But last Thursday, October 3rd, we announced our incredible brand at our reveal party. 
It was almost 600 of our closest friends together with us at Rendezvous Juncture Brewery. A big shout out to Mike Pearson and his staff for helping bring that together and all of our partners there. It was just simply amazing and it was an amazing night. Um, and today, what I thought we'd do is just take a step back, bring everybody into the process, the journey, the behind the scenes that we can now talk about, right? As we have our brand and logo out there. So with that, Anything that anybody wants to say about the event really quick and, and just say thanks or we want to just jump in? I think we were all overwhelmed at the response in the community and, and we have to acknowledge that. I think it's, it's just amazing. People that weren't soccer fans, right? And this is what this is about. It's not just about soccer, right? It's yeah, community, building memories. And, and we saw multiple, multiple, you know, all walks of life and and ranges of ages and mm -hmm. kids and 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 grandparents there together and it's the beginning of building those memories so yeah appreciate the support from the community it's just been right. amazing it's also i mean if you think about it this is really our first event so mm -hmm. and we're in the event business right so <laughs> to uh, we laid a foundation for i think what will be you know pretty pretty cool i thought the support was crazy i think we were all talking before we were guesstimating at least on our side at Stone Ward, 300, 350. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then the final count came out at six, almost 700 people. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that was crazy. And then the really the thing that stood out to me is over the course of the night, we were talking about all these people. I had five people come up and say they were brought to tears by the video yeah. and the story. And they said that this is, so two of them brand new to Northwest Arkansas, three of them born and raised. And they said, what? what the club did and the community, it's exactly what they would have pictured and uh, brought them to tears. So it's always kind of cool to see that. So yeah, pretty great. That's awesome. That's great. Well, let's dive into that and kind of how we got here, right? So we had our first public announcement stating our intentions that we wanted to bring professional soccer to Northwest Arkansas, July 12th, 2023. And 449 days later, we un unveiled our brand, but it was obviously a lot of time in between then that had a lot of work and a lot of community involvement along the process. So we kicked things off immediately with a listing campaign. We did 16 different listing sessions through all corners of Northwest Arkansas. We then did some online surveys. We also had one-on-one -on -one conversations and you, Chris, started even all the way back in 2019 yeah. with kind of what does professional soccer look like in NWA? And, and Warren, you joined and, and participated in a lot of those convos. And then we had our fan panel, and we'll talk about this in, in, in our process. But all throughout, we've maintained that this is not our club, and that's true, and that this is the community's club, and that they needed to be at the center of this process from the beginning. And they have been, and they were, and they will continue to be. So when we got into this process, we already had thousands of responses when we initially kicked things off with a, a little bit of a survey, a fan survey, when we kicked things off with the club. And we tried to come through that quickly, and we very quickly, the three of us and, and some of our other behind-the-scenes partners, got a little bit overwhelmed, almost kind of kind of hit a quagmire, kind of what do we do? And that led to, you know, as we've talked before, uh, Chris and, and Brett connecting and you know, one of the best decisions that we made, which was to partner up with Stoneward and have them guide us through the process. So Brett, I'd like if you could to just start by telling folks about how you reset us in needing to establish a brand core first, because everybody wants to get here. They want to get to the, the, the name, the crest, the colors, and they would just want to jump right into that. Mm -hmm. And you help pull us back and say, wait a minute, we need to establish who we want to be. Yeah, it was really good for us as we had a head start is uh, since day one, I think since even Chris's conversation, community has always been at the preface of this club. So when we got y'all's Excel list of all these names and ideas, as a guy that works in Excel a lot, it was overwhelming with the, the responses. I think it was over, gosh, 2,000 names and ideas. So the foundation was there, but then when we all kind of, as a team, said, you know, what do we want this name to even represent? Yeah. I think all of us had 10 different ideas um, of what that could be. They were all right. None of them were wrong. The community were all right. None of them were wrong. I just think we needed to be unified into what that thought decision was. So once we kind of figured out who we wanted to be when we grew up, which is that brand core mission, vision, values, 
that really put a really good pause button on the entire process. Pause it, shelf it, let's wait, reestablish. We figured out mission, vision, values. Already we've talked about that on the podcast, um, um, so go listen to that if you'd like. But once we've reset that, then we could bring these building blocks of a great foundation back to see, does that hold as our true north? Um, and I think most of it did, which was really cool. So, yeah. Yeah, and I think that that helped. It, it lays the foundation, too, because the name, the the crest design, even some of the elements all connect back to what we said in our mission, vision, values, right? And mm -hmm. in particular, kind of challenging the ordinary, right? And some of the non-traditional oval shape. We'll get into some of that later. Uh, but it all connected back, which I thought was great. So I don't know if Chris and Warren, some of the maybe ahas about resetting a little bit with with Stone Ward that maybe jumped to mind and some of the feedback that we heard out of that and what ultimately resulted in our mission, vision, values. Well, if I may, I, th I think it's important to understand and at the time, if you remember, we were actually interviewing other ad agencies to potentially help with this, right? Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons you go public about intentions is you know to let people know so that it allows other people that might want to be able to help us help us right so mm -hmm. if chris would have returned emails or looked at the email a little <laughs> <It's> quicker, <probably. laughs> we, probably could have, uh, we probably could have you know been facebook together. facebook message <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> that, uh, Brett had reached out and uh, we didn't respond. <laughs> but, uh, it was only like eight months that I sat there. <laughs> In all fairness, it was a couple months. <laughs> but so, and then we we started on you know that name asking the name process and and you know what I really appreciated is the fact that you know we you know, mission vision values are always something important. And where we were going to get to, but you said, no, let's go first. Let's really, let's make that the foundation. And it's not that they're in the crest. Uh, U.S., you just said that, it, but that they're reflected in the crest, but the process was reflected in the crest, right? So, and that's what really matters. Yeah, I think looking back on it too, I'd like your thoughts, because when we first started, you know, going to where we are, I'm so, I'm so happy we landed here. I don't know if we would have landed here if we hadn't have gone through that process first. Mm -hmm. um, United was mentioned for a few, and we've talked about it, but it wasn't to the extent um, and the admiration it got after we started laying with the founding fans and the community. Here's our mission, vision, values. This name drastically went up the list, and it was really yeah. loved by, I think it was 90% either had this name after mission, vision, values, first or second tied over 90, 95%. And I don't Crazy. know if that was the case if we didn't do mid and vision values. Fan panel or, uh -huh. Yeah, the fan yeah, it's pretty. It was pretty clear. Yeah. The one thing that's interesting for a lot of folks that maybe, you know, in the community, we're all working in the supplier community or big companies or manufacturers. And every, every one of these big companies has mission, vision, value statements, right? Yeah. I worked a big company for 15 years. I couldn't tell you what ours was, right? We didn't live it. You, it was a statement, it was a piece of paper, and probably a lot of people feel like that when they think about larger corporations. And so I went in a little bit like, yeah. in the back of my brain, do we do we really need this now? Versus when we're having an organization of people in place, right? And I was, I mean, I was way off. Like, yeah, we didn't need it. <laughs> and we needed it at that time because that was a guiding light. That was a direction that was also bringing in the community, letting them know where we were going and why we were doing what we were doing, right? The why is really important there. And I think that always just helped us <clears throat> as we sorted through 2000 name submissions and colors and crests and all these options and shapes and everything that always helped us be the guiding light. So we really, I would commend our group that we lived it, you know, we really did live that. Um, and we still do. So. Yeah. And you guys helped us refine our our kind of questions that we were asking the community too in our public surveys after we got, you know, mission, vision, values and, mm -hmm. you know, building on a lot of what we had asked in the community uh, listening sessions. And, you know, Warren, you've done this multiple times and you made sure to, you know, ingrain in me and the team as we went through that process. Don't just ask them about soccer. Honestly, that's more secondary. What we want to do is ask them why they love the area. Why do they love Northwest Arkansas? What connects them to Northwest Arkansas? And also, what are some challenges? Well, let's talk about that because, I mean, there's a reason for that. And a lot of people don't really 
I think, fully understand, mm-hmm. right? So um, and what we're trying to do when we're having, you know, where we're pointing people in that direction is to understand uh, that we're trying to understand emotions, Yeah. right? So um, emotions are what drives us as human beings, right? So if words really don't matter. It's, you know, how the words actually drive us. Mm-hmm. And so um, it's really important to understand um, because also while we're, I'm not from here full time, you guys aren't originally from here. Um, we need to really understand kind of the DNA of the, of this area, right. And then be the biggest homers for this area. So how can we be big homers? Mm-hmm. How can we be the biggest cheerleaders if we don't understand the emotions? Right. So it was really about an emotional driver to really, you know, ask And second, oh. note, we will get the soccer fans. I guarantee yeah. you, we will have all the soccer fans. They may not come to every game, but they're going to come to a lot of them. Um, and we need to we need to actually educate and get the other people. Once we get them into a match, it's so electric, they'll fall in love with the game. Right. But if we're not talking about all the other things that's important to them, then we're you know we're 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 a symbol without ears. If that makes any sense, mm-hmm. you know, or just we need to help all the other people understand kind of why they love this area, and then this let this be a tool for them too. Yeah. Hence the leading name was what when we first started? <laughs> quality, quality, quality Life, life FC. FC. Yeah. <laughs> and which I don't know if we've ever seen a, or heard the, the feedback of uh, potentially that being a football club name. But, you know, if we could have, that maybe would have been the, the driving yeah. thing if that was not just so out. It was the beginning of digging but, into the emotions that we discovered that, right? It was just at the tip of it because it's, it's so easy for people to say that, right? I love living here. It's great quality yeah. of life. We say it every day. It almost takes it for granted in a way, but it really was a universal yeah. theme. And then it was to Warren's point, like, all right, we got to peel that onion much deeper. Yeah, which we did, and it was great, and it came out. I think yep. the other big theme that was just resounding was the overwhelming natural beauty that we yeah. have here. That's just right out our back door. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The hidden active. gem, the the yeah. magic of this place. Yeah, it's right. not just it's that. It was being active in it. That's right. That too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the biking and hiking and walking and swimming. And I mean, yep. all angles of it. Yeah. And I think active, if you really wanted to peel it down, um, active could be a good word for all three that we found. So nature was one. People wanted to be active in nature, but they also wanted to be active in their community. Yeah. And that was a really big thing. And then the third one we saw was an excitement of tomorrow. And they wanted to be active in building that. So I think active is a key word. If you wanted a word to tie all those together, together, active and that was really cool to see and that's another thing and and warren you've talked about this too is how soccer clubs can be a tool to activate uh, a population and and communities and give them a vehicle on how do they become active yeah so if you think about any company can't it's just that we're able to draw more people because we have you know we're just a little bit more you know not every day if that makes sense um yeah you know, I think the one back to the community input, input mm-hmm. though, uh, wasn't it interesting too. Where, because for the record, I ax I loathe the name United. I really do. Mm-hmm. It's just overused. It's not. Um, I of the clubs that actually use it, that's really not. Maybe it's more United in their soccer fandom, mm-hmm. but here it was really a how do um, they the the people told us. <laughs> How do we actually unite our community, right? We've got a bunch of communities here that really are cool, but they're so much more powerful together, right? So that's, you know, what I really loved about this whole process because it, you know, I had to come, I had to learn to love the name because it made so much sense, right? And it was the active, you know, verb or whatever of uniting the community that's together, right? right? And right. so it, I think that that's <clears throat> where, and you even saw this online too. Um, you know, we we've see, received just overwhelmingly positive feedback from, you know, so many in the community and abroad even. Um, and I think, you know, you're never going to please everybody. So everybody, you know, that's always going to be the case and that's okay. Um, people are entitled to their opinions, good and bad, and that's totally fine. But it was interesting to see that, you know, for anybody that may have said, you know, oh, another United, right? Because it is overused in the, in mm-hmm. soccer. 
here, and it just speaks to the difference that you just said, Warren, which for you helped you come around on the name is what it is actively doing and the meaning behind it. I think that that's one of the things that I really, I already knew as a big soccer fan, but crests and names are great, but the stories behind them are almost either as, in my opinion, maybe sometimes even more so important to help understand the the crest itself and, and what the club's about. And so that you, you saw people jumping in to defend it uh, almost uh, for, for the people yeah. or to help them understand why, especially if they were not from the area. And that was really cool to see. And you think about it, right? Our region is, is four major cities. Mm-hmm. It's kind of always been. And then we have a, a, a bunch of other cities that are all part of that. But there's four major cities. Our region is called Northwest Arkansas, which is a geographical description, right? <laughs> our state is Arkansas. Yep. And we've heard that our fans love our state, but they also feel like we have something so unique and special in Northwest Arkansas, right? And and so that was the challenge I think that we had. It was hard, much harder really hard. than I ever thought it would be when I thought about this way back in the day, right? I, it was, and even you know people that haven't been through the process I've heard a little bit of feedback from buddies. Of, oh, well, well, I mean, okay, it was Ark United, but, you know. But it's when you when you kind of peel all the layers back and explain how you got to it, um, that it makes complete sense, you know. And that's why the video, I think, is a great way of doing that. Um, so thanks to Ward. Yeah, I think it's too. It's uh, you know, I was the same way. I think all of us yeah. were the same way. as so Ark United is fine. It's safe. Uh, but really, a brand is a collection of stories that make you feel a certain mm-hmm. way and just think of the big brands like right now dove that's a bird um but when you think about dove really the stories you've heard at connecting to that completely different story yeah. patagonia is a place but what does what patagonia this collection of stories makes a brand and from day one this group and the community have invited the the community to create that story and i think going back to what chris talked about even using the name ozark over northwest arkansas and united when we invited people and again we started on mission vision values yep. we started that story it turned from safe name to most admired tattoo worthy name people would die on a hill for when we yep. got those surveys back is it it cannot be anything but ozark united based on what you just said and if you don't have your brand core established you're not creating stories yep. so speaks yep. to that And we got all of this feedback and we needed to refine it, right? And we knew that we would get to that point at some, you know, part of our process. So talk a little bit about the fan panel, Brett, and kind of how we put that together and the individuals and what those meetings were like uh, for people that obviously, you know, it was 36 of them. So not everybody got to participate. And it was you guys driving a lot of that so that we could really stay out of it, (laughs) you know, and and get a diverse group of the community. Yeah. Yeah, we, we had over 2,000 responses that, of people who wanted to be part of the founding fans. Anyone who was at the, the brand launch heard kind of my story on it. It was not just enter your first name, last name, hit go. You had to talk about multiple reasons you believed in this community and you believed in this club. We, we hand-selected 36 people to be the mouthpiece of this great community. And I think I'm so glad we did. You know, we went behind the scenes. This is kind of, the, you know, the reason for the podcast this is kind of a um, a thing we went back and forth on is yeah. we didn't want to limit it to 36, but we also needed really rapid, on-the-go, in-depth conversations that you can't have at mass scale when you're trying to create a brand from scratch. And so I'm so glad we did because there were a few names, for example, that I, um, not speaking, for example, Marshallese, I don't speak Marshallese and I don't speak Spanish, and we heard a lot of feedback from some of these 36 fans. Hey, this name is really good. I can't say it. Um, mm-hmm. I can't say it. Does it roll off with ours? It's like, oh, that's interesting. Or, hey, did you know that even though you're presenting it this way from my background of being from Brazil, it comes across differently? Mm-hmm. No, I did not know that. <laughs> um, so it was really good to get this in-depth, different perspective. But what was really cool is watching this group behind the scenes come together like Ozark was one, even myself included, I was always on the Northwest Arkansas name. It kind of, I've always, I went to school at U of A, I've been here for a long time. I've always referred to it as Northwest Arkansas, 
But when you, again, go back to the story of who we are and what we want to represent, Mm -hmm. I cannot now go back to Northwest Arkansas. That is like, (laughs) that would be the dumbest idea versus Ozark. And you see that through all the fan panels as well. So anyway, that was like a rapid acceleration story of it. Really, we learned a lot because of different perspectives. So I'd want to know, Warren, in your background, like, what was your founding fan experience? Have you guys ever done that? On any other clubs you've been part of, and and what were the takeaways that you've seen? Yeah, you know, if you remember, we were perplexed. We were actually at a jun- We were at a, a juncture. We were trying to figure out what to do because we didn't have a clear winner. Mm-hmm. We didn't have a clear understanding, despite all of the um, community listening se- listening sessions. The the uh, the um, um, you know the the focus groups and all that type of stuff. We didn't have something, so we basically. Uh, I think you threw the idea out, you know, what, what do you think about that? And I said, I think we all said that that would be great as long as we can make sure that these people truly do represent the community, right. Versus having their own agenda. Right. And, um, and even that, I think we started that process and we thought it would be a lot quicker, but we learned we needed to actually spend a lot more time. So we went back to the group. We thought we'd go, you know, two or three times. I think we went back six, seven, eight Please. times. Yeah, I had nine. Nine. Yeah, it had a few more diverse angles to it as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? yeah. Yeah. And which I think they appreciated, you know, at least that's what I've heard. Yeah. Um, and because it was true, right? It wasn't, it, it wasn't contrived. It wasn't uh, something that we were trying to manipulate. It was something that was their feedback. And, you know, there are some that weren't as wild about it, mm-hmm. you know. Um, I still wanted to, to name the Ridge Runners, but you guys wouldn't you guys <laughs> would do that. <laughs> that was one that they said that they had trouble with the R's. Yeah, the R's. That's exactly that right. Lead, yeah. It was a leading name, and we a lot of us liked it, and we were like, ooh, okay, well, maybe. <laughs> so, I know. We won't say the other name that Warren really wanted. Yeah. <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> but thank you again here on this platform to those fan panel members mm-hmm. who, you know, dedicated those, those hours of their lives, this time, uh, time away from their work, their families. We really, really appreciate all of their help because we couldn't have gotten here without them. Uh, because there were even on the name, like we just said, some of that, some of the feedback on the, on the badge itself, some of the different nuances, right. Um, really flushed themselves out and yeah. either changed our minds or solidified our minds in what we may have been thinking and teetering on a couple options within it. Uh, and we wouldn't have got there without that, that feedback. So we're right going to talk guys. about the crest. Yeah. I think Shape. we jump into it. So Brett, this is, this is now your time to shine here, sir. So take us through the badge and the different meanings. We know the name Ozark United. But talk to us about the badge and the elements and the colors and what does everything mean? Yeah, uh, you know, I wanted to start with, I know we kind of talked about it broadly, but Ozark is kind of where it started. And it's one of those wow moments that I didn't think that I would see in these founding fan panels is everyone not only loved Ozark, but they would defend it to anybody who said Northwest Arkansas because it came back to belonging. Um, That was one that, in mission vision values we wanted everyone to be part of this and everyone would ask me to go back hey could you go back to our mission vision values so i can make the best decision for our community and then i would do that and then we come back to name it has to be ozark because you're being exclusive by doing northwest arkansas only i want it to be inclusive and i want it to reach more people and more support so that was a big thing that the community came back with we start with the, the O. We call that the elongated O. And if you are in soccer, you'll know that that's pretty unique from a crest design, from a badge standpoint. Um, if you come in and, and you're not in soccer, I, I really want to point that out is we want it to be unique. And that is something you just typically don't see is the O. So that was like our first. I'm glad I oh. loved that from the beginning. Did I'll, you? I mean, I was very supportive of the sure, shape. Yeah. Very supportive. <laughs> tell me more, Chris. Tell me more. Yeah, well, it's a really important point, actually, because I think in a soccer community and soccer purists, this is this doesn't exist, right? I mean, AC Milan has something in this 
genre in Europe and the U.S. I can't think of an MLS or USL. Forward Madison is a little bit ish oval in the same vein. Yep, yep, that's fair. Are but it's it's ish. pretty unique. I am a purist and traditionalist. I wanted a you know shield that's strong, that's powerful, that's what our community is like a shield. It's going to be awesome. And then this thing shows up. <laughs> I was like, oh, that was my first reaction, you know. And um, but when you put it all together and you talk about the community and you start to then interlink and you'll get to that. So I won't mm -hmm. steal your thunder. But I think it, w while you're on that point, yeah. I think you have to recognize that I'm not so sure that if we let the soccer purists design right. American soccer, that we'd actually have the amount of momentum the sport has. Yeah. It's different here in the United right. States. It's played different. It's represented differently. And. And, you know, so I get, I get the purists and I understand yeah. kind of their, their feedback, but you know, that we've got to make it our own. Right. And, and I, I think, think that's where the panel then with not just like, there was mega soccer fans that were not part of the panel. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. But that's intentional. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There were also there were mega some, soccer fans there were on some, the panel, of course, right? Absolutely. But we were very intentional, yeah. you know, back to but that we, point. Yeah. About we know a lot of people wanted to be part of it. It just, right. Yeah, um, absolutely. So that's a great point, Warren. Yeah. Well, very we were very intentional driving Stone Ward, so we did not participate in that's who right. no, participated. Stone correct. Ward picked them, exactly. uh, but we just said, "Here's what we're looking for." I want to make sure people mm -hmm. know that because yeah, it wasn't like we we're choosing one over the other. We had to keep ourselves out of it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And intentionally didn't go to those sessions as well, right? So you get honest feedback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Behind the scenes, this group was not involved at all. They, uh, we were very. Uh, true, we hid the data until the very end. I mean, that is a fact to, the, to anyone listening is they did not know the, the findings until we gave it to them and we, we had NDA signed and, and we kept it under wraps because of that. And, you know, I'm going to give props to this whole team and our community, but just again, behind the scenes too, this goes into another point. Shout out to Warren because this, you know, as Chris talked about, if you're a soccer purist, it's your typical, you want that heritage, you want that, that's the shield and the crest and, and you want that. But when we talked to the community, um, not only did we hear from them, but Warren really challenged us as this brand needs to fit what, what this area is going to be in five, 10 years. And this brand has to be longer than a year or two. We are growing at a, a rapid rate. You almost have to think five, 10 years in the future to create a good brand. And I think this is what that's going to do. We could have played it safe and yeah, it could have worked for a year or two, and then you're going to have to do a refresh. But from everything I've read as well, people are just really drawn to the uniqueness. So I think I think our process worked. You know, and you guys gave us the first idea of this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you really threw it out to us when it was a little bit, you know, take a, take a step back from my perspective. I think Warren probably jumped on board quicker on that. I think we all bought it. In the but then, yeah. yeah. All yeah. of us, yeah. Yeah. So that's the elongated O. Um, and then so kind of moving down, I think where my eyes go first is the colors. It's the, it's probably the biggest thing we heard on every piece of feedback is colors. Overwhelmingly, this was something that while this changed and the name revised and it was refined, color was overwhelmingly green. It was because of nature, because of growth. Um, it was listed by almost 98% of all community feedback for number one choice of color. Yep. Shades changed. Um, they didn't really know if we should go light or dark. Mm -hmm. So we kind of did both here, shown on, on light and dark green. So that was kind of an easy win. That makes sense for the Ozark region. You have the interlocking OZ. That's representative of our strength and community. And we heard a lot, again, behind the scenes. People kind of wanted an abstract way. They were like, we want you to show... We need to show strength in our communities coming together to align with this unity, this united, but we don't really know how. And so how we thought of that was OZ interlocking the strength of our community. So that's why you kind of see that um, that connection. So I'm going to pause there. Of what do you guys think? Because I was so close. I guess we we're all closely tied to this. But what did the OZ kind of represent for you? To me, it's that interlocking strength of the communities, but did it mean anything else to you guys or did you hear anything else from friends or peers? That was the first thing for sure, the connectivity, but just a little bit futuristic. You know, I know the, the you know, ascending lines on the outside are kind of our nod towards our growth in the future, but I think I think the kind of OZ kind of touches on that as well. For me, um, 
and it wasn't, I mean, it's not part of like the official story behind it. Right. But for uh -oh. me, for me, what resonated, no, it's, it's positive. <laughs> um, the interconnectedness and, and just the different lines that you kind of see and the zig and the zag, it almost reminded me of how kind of the trails in Northwest Arkansas, either biking or hiking kind mm -hmm. of weave together and cross together. And, you know, you take winding paths to, to find out where you're going. Um, and there's so much of that about what we love about this area. So I don't know if I've ever shared that with you guys. Yeah, but, I've never heard that. Uh, that, that, that but uh, I like the, the thing that I was like a velodrome of us. <laughs> 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 but I think for me, it was the, uh, so it's about connectivity, but it also, if you look at it, and I know I've mentioned this multiple times, there's really four connecting points. Yeah. And it representing the four cities, right? The four like major. major cities, not that. Right. anybody's less important but it does recognize that hey of these all four we're all one mm -hmm. yeah so that's the oz we, we talked about that then the ark was a a point behind the scenes that came later um that's for, from community feedback as well is a lot of feedback we had is we really want to give a, a nod to the state uh yeah. maybe it shouldn't be the central focus because this is a different region it's 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 kind of separated but it's all unified so that's where the ARK came in, which you you should have some state pride and you should represent a state. And especially for anyone outside of Arkansas, because it's Ozark, I think it really ties it together geographically yeah. where we are from a fan base. So I think that was a subtle touch. And then my favorite, honestly, besides the colors, is the very bottom is Regnant Populous. Me too. Um, I think behind the scenes for anyone listening, we were brainstorming, we were talking, um, and this was a, a thought someone had is, hey, did you know the state motto is the people rule? Who had that thought? I think it was Emily. It was it Emily? Cho. Emily Cho, yeah. shout out creative director. Yeah. She did some research. Awesome. And we talked to some history, one of the founding fans was a history professor. Yeah. So we talked to him um, to get some background on that because we didn't know connotation. Was that a good thing? Was it a bad yeah. thing? Yeah. It came across, it was a good thing. Um, but then you go back to where we started we want this to be community. I can't think of something better than the people rule it's Perfect. when we're asking all of their feedback, not only for this crest, but where we bring this brand forward. So yeah. that is, Regged Populous is my favorite. I don't know if you guys have any I, thoughts. I agree, and we're able to kind of elevate that part of our state story, right? Mm -hmm. That a lot of people probably did not know that. Mm -hmm. right? So I think that's really cool. And it was, it was a resounding yes yeah. must be included <laughs> from the fan panel once we introduced it and once hey you're still you, exactly yeah, yeah. 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 Which nobody had heard cool. of it for that's the right for the yeah nobody had no and i you know i hadn't yeah. more, chris hadn't nobody had really heard of it uh but and nobody on the fan panel either but once they heard it they went oh my god yes and again connecting back to what we were trying to do and yeah. everything we had said so if wow. I may, real quick, on the 25 and the diamond, that was more of a reference to uh, the general feedback we were getting, right? So mm -hmm. that was in the very beginning. Yeah, Ozark, you know, uh, Arkansas, the 25th state, the diamond state, right? Mm -hmm. So we felt we had to kind of include some of that. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's the ascending stripes mm -hmm. really truly represent kind of where this community is and where this community is going. You know, just, um, and I know it, it, it didn't, because they weren't all, if you remember, there mm -hmm. were some going down. Mm -hmm. And I, it was Emily, I guess, that kind of said, you know, let's make them all go up because we are ascending. And so to me, that's kind of the, I think, the thing that brings it all together. Yeah. Because if you didn't have those on the side, you'd have, I don't know, something there. Or like if we talked about a bear or we talked about some some other things like that. Yeah, because oh, we used to be the bear, we used to be big. The bear state, so that was, you know, how do we include that? Or what are some of those other things? We had bears and hawks. We had the uh, Hawksville Crag. Hawksville Crag was a big which, image. In fairness, I mean, you guys can see some secondary marks on how do we include some of the more iconic, yeah. you know, um, you know, picturesque things about the state and things that recognize. We had a hellbender. Yeah. Which hellbender. Now, now we know. Have a shout out to the supporters out. group. Shout what was out the coming. mythical answer or the mythical uh, creature we had? I think it was the howler. The howler. The howler. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. howler. Yeah. You know, that was kind of interesting to me, though, Chris, is going in here. I thought when we asked him for mascot, um, what came back is there wasn't a lot of interest in yeah. a mascot for this, which I would have actually thought the opposite yeah. because yeah. of the bear state and mm -hmm. hawks and the hellbenders and the even deer population, whatever. Sure. We have a lot of stuff here. 
um, they all kind of came back and was like, no, we, we really want this to be like community. Like, yeah. I, I don't know how you do it, but that to me is a, is a secondary thing. And I think it goes back to what I've heard on this crest and this, and this design is there's a lot of story when you look at this and everyone has a lot of different favorite parts from every feedback I've gotten. Yeah. So really, you know, Warren really likes the stripes. I like the regular populace and, yeah. or the diamond. I've heard the same on people liking just the diamond more so than anything. So I think this kind of crest design plays to a lot of different opinions um, where that's not the case. Typically it's, I like this main aspect of it, but this has a lot of that for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Any last thoughts uh, before we kind of wrap things up, Chris, Warren, Brett? I mean, I think we we went through an incredible process with incredible people and incredible feedback from our community all along the way. Uh, and the end result, and I think from the reaction ultimately is, you know, we can all like it, but it's not our club, it's the communities. And from the reaction and responses that we've gotten, I think we we ended up with a great result and that's because the community was involved from the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think we do need to talk or let's uh, that's, I mean, um, it's just, this is the men's brand. Yeah. It's a great point. And we did not, uh, we were going through the process and I think it's important for the people to understand that there was a period in the process that we recognized that we weren't being true to the process for the women and for the women's brand. And we're a bunch of men. We had one woman on the team or two women on the team yep. um, from Stone Ward, mm -hmm. both of them, yeah. that were um, participating in the process. One was probably more outgoing than the other. Um, so we didn't feel we had true representation. Um, and the fan panels were uh, skewed more male. Yeah, 60-40 around that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, it, there's a period of time where we actually said, okay, we, yeah, we have some thoughts on a design. that We have some ideas uh, for a name, but we just said, well, we got to stop. Um, and I think to, to the group's credit, you know, uh, it, 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 it's not something we wanted to do, uh, but we pivoted and recognized it and said, okay, now we can do the right thing. Uh -huh. Yeah. Right. So, and so the group knows we're going to go through this exact same process. I mean, so you're all the fans know. Yes. We're going to go through this exact same process. It's going to, you know, double cost, uh, double the time, yep. but at least we get to do it right. Right. Yeah. So, and kudos to you guys. Cause it, the easy button that would, would have been when you heard that feedback to continue on, you know, I think we're all excited to launch this brand, but kudos to you guys for listening to the community. Uh, because that is something as a person actively talking to the founding fans and the community, when I brought that up, when we talked about that, it was an overwhelming, yes, 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 yes. You have to do that. You have to, yeah. with the rise of women's sports and how important that is. And as Stone Ward, who's worked with the U S women's soccer team, how instrumental that team was for just driving soccer fandom across both men's and women's. I think, uh, I think that process is going to be worth it. And I'm kind of excited to, uh, see what that un unravels. Yeah, it's a really good point, and thank you, Warren, mm -hmm. for bringing it up. I think it's important. So it is, and um, you know, I think we also just want to make sure we we acknowledge a lot about the community and panel support. We also have a core group of folks that that believed in us from the beginning and invested in us, and and made a lot of what we have done to date very, very possible. Um, yes, and and you know, while we we don't call those folks out individually, you know who you are, and um, it's an amazingly humble link for us to have people believe in this project and what we're doing for the community. And we wouldn't be where we are without them. So I wanna make sure we acknowledge that as well. Yeah, 100% and, <laughs> and take it a step further because it's really their, it's, it's, it's their belief that allows the larger belief, right? So um, mm -hmm. you know, it's a startup approach that we took. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly right. So early stage yeah. funding leads to Momentum, momentum leads to, yeah. you know, other things. And I think to, I mean, we all saw it. We, you know, there's plenty of folks that we've been having, trying to have conversations with, uh -huh. um, may have been challenging to get to both corporations or individuals sure. that after Friday or after, um, okay, come Friday, sure. yeah. yeah, became a lot easier, sure. right? Yeah. They started returning, yeah. returning calls. Not that we had really an issue with that. It was yeah. just kind of. Yeah. It was more of a priority now. Schedule's packed up this week, Warren. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good problem. Awesome. 
Well, thank you guys. Hey, I have a, a quick bit of housekeeping for our listeners and more reminders, but we have a new club name. So we have a new club website. So please start going to find out all the things that you need from the club and about the club to ozarkunited.com. That is O-Z-A-R-K-U-N-I-T-E-D.com. That is also one of the biggest questions that we get is where can we find merch? You can find merch online on our website. There is a shop tab right at the top on the nav bar. We also, we're not quite ready yet for season tickets or season ticket deposits, but we also did launch a early access list that you can sign yourself up for at no cost. What this will do is get you 24 hours early access to go in and secure your season ticket deposits once we get to that stage as a club. So again, that's available on our website on the tickets tab. Go in, sign up, get yourself on that list at no cost to yourself. I want to thank our guests for coming on to the show. That's it for this episode of Pitch to Pro. We hope you guys enjoyed it. Warren has one more thing he wants to share. Well, I think we need to remind him of the social media tabs as well now because those are different than the Ozark United. They are. You're correct. So we have new club social handles. Don't worry if you followed us before it converted over. But if you're a new follower, you can find us at Ozark United FC, all one word spelled correctly on all major platforms. Thank you, Warren, for that reminder. So again, thank you guys for this episode. We hope you enjoyed it. We'll catch you next time at uh, Pitch to Pro. Until then, go Ozark United FC. Cheers, Northwest yeah. Arkansas. Woo.